next guest, Hall of Famer, needs no introduction. He's a four-time Super Bowl champion, a two-time MVP, one of the greatest clutch players in sports history. I cannot believe that we've had him on the show once, twice, maybe three times now. The pride of Notre Dame fighting Irish Hall of Famer, Joe Montana. Joe, welcome to the show. What's up, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, Joe. Good morning. Montana. How's everybody? Joe. Great. We love having you. It's great to see you. Hopefully sometime in person soon. Uh, We will talk football with you in a minute, but you're here on behalf of something near and dear to my heart. Beer. Guinness. Guinness. You recently (laughs) teamed up with them to shoot a commercial. Tell me about the partnership. Yeah, no, it's been great. You know, Guinness uh, has partnered with, um, you know, my alma mater at Notre Dame, and um, they're just out announcing a couple things. You know, we have a new commercial coming out. That's celebrating that, hey, um, you know, we've all come a long, long way together and that now, you know, the good things are back in our grasp again and it's time to go out and celebrate. And they're celebrating because they're opening a new tap room, um, only the second one in the U.S., uh, in Chicago. Uh, They just announced it yesterday. And um, some of those good things are happening this week in Chicago. You know, they got Notre Dame, Wisconsin and part of that Shamrock series. And um, they're going up there and um, they're going to be a part of showing why Chicago is so great. And this tap room will be part of that celebration. Uh, there'll be great beers in there, uh, great experiences that you can only get in Chicago. And also, you know, the good old Irish one from Ireland also will be in there. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, this is this is something that's great to be a part of. It's uh, It's been a great partnership with us. And and, um, you know, I, I fell in love with Guinness many years ago when I went was in Ireland. So um, it's been great being a part of this and especially with the connection with Notre Dame. It's really cool. And it's so great to have you as the ambassador for Guinness. And you're also an ambassador for the 49ers. And we look at their team now, Joe, and Jimmy Garoppolo is the incumbent. He's been named the quarterback one. He started the first two games. And yet they went ahead and drafted Trey Lance third overall. Let's go back to your career. 1987, Joe Montana, one of the best players in the league, all the rings, going on to be one of the most successful quarterbacks ever. And yet the 49ers still went ahead and acquired Steve Young. What was it like in that locker room? What was it like knowing that you're the man, but Steve Young is looming, and they did go out and get him? Um, I, I think one of the things that, you, that you concerned you a lot, you know, especially with me early, was you know I just had a back injury, and uh, they were – concerned about whether I was going to be able to play or, or how long I could stay healthy um, after that. And, you know, I think teams have to have a player that can come in and play, um, whether it's a, you know, a draft choice or going in and getting trading for someone like Steve. And it uh, makes a lot of sense because they, you know, they got to protect the organization. And, you know, that's just the way it is now, with, you know, with, um, with Jimmy. I mean, Jimmy had, has had trouble you know, staying healthy so far. And, you know, this is protection, not just for, um, you know, the team, but the organization. And and to have them continue to win, that you've got to be able to have somebody that can step in there and play. And obviously they weren't happy with the backups that they had. Um, So this makes a lot of sense. Joe, what doesn't make sense is a 44-year-old quarterback throwing five touchdowns this past weekend, and the world just kind of saying, yeah, whatever, no big deal. We as a show are battling against the normalization of what Tom Brady is doing because it is not normal. He's 44 and looks like an MVP. What are your thoughts on his performance so far this year, and can he actually play to 50, or is this some sort of Paul Bunyan myth? What do you think? No, I think he can play to – I mean – the rules have changed to the point where you you know you don't have to worry about those big hits, and so the injury part of it was really, you know, I, I played till 38 or nine, I can't remember, and um, but it's just can you stay healthy and stay on the field? And I I had to get out mainly because I I had another concussion, and I started looking at my you know I had four kids, and I still wanted to be active with them, and as long as this as long as he keeps playing the way he is, I don't see any reason why he can't. He's, You know, it's not like he's a running quarterback. He's a pocket guy, and uh, he's going to stay in there as long as that arm hangs in there. I don't see any reason why he can't, except for his wife. I was telling the... (laughs) <laughs> now, Joe, I was telling the lovely, uh, the lovely people here, my lovely co-host here, 
about how I turned on the TV for the first time to watch some football, and the San Francisco 49ers were on there, and all I kept hearing was Manning to, I mean, um, I'm sorry, not Manning, Eli, he's getting his number retired this weekend. Nice. All I heard was Montana to Rice, Montana to Rice, Montana to Rice, and I was like, who are these people? And they must be really, really good. So what was it that made you and Jerry's relationship and chemistry so special, and who do you see in the league right now as a duo that shares that same connection that you two had? Well, it, Jerry's a special guy. I mean, it, it, I, unfortunately for John Taylor, who was another pretty special guy, that uh, um, Jerry just had a unique ability to get behind people. And, you know, not he had good speed, but he didn't have great speed, but he just had a knack of being in the right spot and ran tremendously uh, great routes. So it was easy to read as a quarterback. And we got on the same page pretty fast. Uh, luckily for me, I just, I always tell him he came along too late in my career. We'd, we'd have had a lot more fun if he, if he would come along a little, a little bit earlier. But um, <laughs> it, he, there's, well, you know, you know, when, when you, it, the quarterback reads the body of, the, of um, the receiver. And when you have, he had this ability just with his body to be able to tell you, okay, I know where he's going. It's time to let go of the ball. Because a lot of times you have to throw the ball early. And um, to have that ability in a receiver. And, um, like I said, it's sad for John Taylor because there were so many times we ran like du dual double routes on both sides. And I'd go, oh, John Taylor, John Taylor. Ah, Jerry Rice. <laughs> so I look over there and John Taylor's wide open. <laughs> <laughs> and so and I'm going, I'm sorry, JT. I'm he's going, no, no, no problem. He never never complained about it. So but uh what a I had a great great pair. It's it's hard to say, you know, Tom's always got some Yeah. Well Tom's always got some great guys down there. I mean, I think that's part of the, the reason that you know they're being successful too. He's got guys that are playing well for him on the outside and you know, it makes it easy on the quarterback when you have uh, guys like that and yourself who you know, like would have taken you any day. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, mean, that's pretty, yeah. I can die a happy man, Joe. I mean, I'm freaking out. Joe man. Montana saying that. Jeez. I'll take it. Joe, thank you so much for being on the show, for stopping by. Good luck with everything with Guinness and your fighting Irish this weekend. And please stop by anytime. Yeah, I Thanks, appreciate Joe. it. Thank Thanks, you. Joe. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. And ladies.